This is a revision video on phloem and translocation. So there are three revision questions. Pause the video, try those, and then we'll go through answers. So, question one, describe the structure and function of the phloem. So the structure of the phloem, so you have a basic diagram here. So the sieve tube element is a very thin tube-like cell that is alive, but it lacks a lot of organelles. So it doesn't have a nucleus, um, doesn't have ribosomes, um, it just has a few mitochondria and a small amount of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, and then each sieve tube element will have a companion cell with it. And that companion cell has many organelles. So it has a nucleus, it has many mitochondria, ribosomes, uh, rough and smooth endoplasmic reticulum, uh, vacuole, and all those things. And just to notice, in this sieve tube element, there are these sieve plates. So these structures that have pores in them. And they're at various intervals throughout the sieve tube element. So that's the basic structure. So the function of the phloem. So involved in transporting sucrose and amino acids and organic ions from source to sink. And remember that the source can be above or below the sink. So it's not in one particular direction. It can go up and down the plant. And we'll look at how that process can occur in any direction next. So the four steps of how sucrose is transported from source cells to sieve tube element. Let's take a look at that. So source to sieve tube element, getting sucrose into the phloem. So what we'll do is we'll go through the steps and before each step I will show you uh, the animation in the diagram. And on to step three in the diagram then. And then, so we now have sucrose in that cell wall space and a high concentration of hydrogen ions. So the next step is So those hydrogen ions are then moved down a concentration gradient through a co-transporter and sucrose is co-transported in that process against its concentration gradient into the sieve tube element. So let's now look at the six steps of mass flow. So now we've got sucrose transported into the sieve tube element. We've shown how it gets from source to sieve tube element in four steps. Let's look at mass flow. So first step, and you'll see it on the diagram first, and then I'll give you the text. And so because there is now more water uh, that has moved into the sieve tube element, hydrostatic pressure increases in the sieve tube element at the source. So let's now look at the next four steps. So now we're at the sink. So as with all the other diagrams uh, in this video, you'll see the animation first and then I give you the text. So that's step three. Step four. And step five. And so that lowering of hydrostatic pressure is what drives mass flow. So this last piece of text that's really important.
So the fact that that hydrostatic pressure can be created above or below the source uh, means that mass flow can occur in any direction. So that is the process of translocation which occurs in the flow.